There is a story in the Bible about a lady and Jesus was sitting and she was washing his feet with her hair. And in doing so, she was using expensive oil to wipe Jesus' feet. And there was a dude in the room, and the dude said, man, don't you know that that's expensive oil that she's using to wipe your feet? And Jesus' response was one that I want to give you this morning. He says, he who is forgiven much will love much. See, I, I, don't, I don't know how many people in here remember you. <laughs> Some of you don't get that. How many people, how, how many of you remember you? <laughs> and when I remember me and how he saved me, See, don't, don't sit here this morning and have a comparison spirit because, you know, you wasn't a crackhead. You might not have been a hoe. You know, y'all have to excuse. For those of you who have not been around me, I don't, I don't believe in pulling no punches. You know, I, I never want you to leave here saying, I don't know what Pastor Jones meant. I, you're going to know what I meant when I leave here. Because I'm going to lay it out just the way you talk. Because some folk just want to do church talk. I gave up church talk a long time ago. Because this is the real deal. If you don't do life, life going to do you. And I got tired of life doing me. So I found a scripture in the word. That said no matter how much he has forgiven me of. It was all sin. See, we, 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 ha we have this thing where, you know, just because your life wasn't as bad as the person sitting next to you, that it, 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 it sort of gauges my church activity because of what I've been forgiven. See, I ain't never murdered nobody with a gun. But I done killed some folks with my mouth. So it makes me a murderer. All the same. He who has been forgiven much will love much. And see, I, I don't know where anybody's been in here this morning. But it was just geography. What God's talking about this morning. Is where your heart has been. And where it ought to be now. It has nothing to do with your outward expression. It has everything to do with an inner situation. An inner situation that says this, I might not have done what you did, but I thank God that he forgave me. See, I sat over in that chair this morning and, and they sang the song, <laughs> I'm still here. And see, some of y'all wanted to cry up in here this morning. See, y'all have to excuse me if I look around, because every now and then he'll lay up, lay up a picture in my heart. And I had to move from side to side. And I don't know what it is about this side over here. Every morning I get up here, or most mornings, somebody's picture floats across my screen. And then they show up. I ain't talking about you, Danny. That, that's because Danny ain't been here in a minute. But I'm talking about the brother right here. Right, the brother right there. Right, yeah. Yeah, you raise your hand. Yeah. Let, 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 me, let me tell you something. It, it, it's okay to cry. Because when you cry, it's an inward expression that you, you know what God has done for you. And I want to tell you this morning that this is a divine appointment for you today. The, the scripture that we're going to go to this morning is in Psalm 118. But that's where we're going to start. Psalm 118, and go to right around verse 24. 
and 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 I I try to you know point you out nothing, but I'm you know I'm sort of like pointing you out, I guess. <laughs> I, I, if that's what you want to call it, I, I don't believe you just showed up here. Y'all didn't get that. I, I said I don't believe you know I, I don't believe you just showed up here this morning. So you know what? If don't nobody else get nothing from this thing today, I, I think you're in the right place at the right time. Psalm 118, and this is how it reads. Go, go to verse 24. No, no, go to verse 22. It says, The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing. Ha! If I was a hoop, I'd hoop right there. Ha! This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And, and you know, then he hooks it up. I like the way God hooks stuff up. Look at, the, look at the next one. Save now, I pray, O Lord. Send now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord, and he has given us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar. You are my God. <clears throat> I will praise you. You are my God. I will exalt you. And this next verse 29, you will find ingrained throughout the Psalms. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he's good, and his mercy endures forever. See, I, 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 don't, I don't know how y'all define forever. But it means that even right now it's going on. Mercy is enduring right now. So if it endures, then he says, oh, give thanks to the Lord. As a matter of fact, this became the battle cry of the Israelites when the walls fell down. If you got any walls this morning, they will not fall by you keeping your mouth closed. Amen. You lose by default. And I'm going to get to my subject here in just a minute. What you believe is more powerful than anything on this earth. What you believe, and we've been, man, we've been, we've been beating this thing up and beating it up and beating it up every Sunday, talking about what you believe. My question to you is this morning: What is it that you do believe? Irvin made the analogy this morning about coming into the building and how this becomes your mansion, and in this mansion are many rooms, but you never get to go in any doors until you first come in the house. And most of us been circling the house. You've been circling the house. You've been coming around church. And some of you even say you've been in church. And, and, and just because you've been in church, you think that makes you a believer. But that don't make you a believer. It, make, it doesn't make you any believer any more than going to McDonald's make you a hamburger. Or sitting in your car make you a garage. I mean, sitting in your garage make you a car. So coming in. So what, what is it that happens once I get in the house? That makes me different from being outside the house. Everybody say believe. believe. Yeah, you got to believe that what goes on in here is God. The Bible says that every word that's written in this book is the inspired word of God. Not just one word, but every word has been inspired by God. You can't pick and choose which one of these you want to believe today. And most of us are pickers and choosers. Because it's a, it allows us to maintain some kind of footing in the world we left once before. Everybody say two worlds. So, so the, the subject that I'm teaching from today is, is this, living above normal. Living above normal. Now, if anybody has any 
knowledge of any parts of the Bible, something you done heard from your grandmama, something you done heard from somebody, you know about Adam and Eve. And you knew where they were. They were where? In the garden. And how God laid out a plan for them in how they were supposed to live. Think about it. Man, they, they walking around chilling. Ain't had no clothes on. Just walking around. What, what God, then they had to ask God. God said, what you want? And before they answered, God already gave it to them. Wasn't no rain. They didn't have to have no umbrellas. They didn't have to have no galoshes. All they did was walk around. See, that was, that was from Adam right there. And, and God intended for it to stay that way. But listen, not only stay that way, he wanted us or wanted them to colonize and expand the Garden of Eden throughout the earth. But something happened. And yeah, I know I'm, I'm going over this and most of y'all know it. You said, well, why don't he move to something different? Well, because you don't do nothing different. <laughs> Well, yeah, when you do something different, I'll, I'll, I'll say something different. So, but until you, okay, y'all y'all with me? Yeah. Uh, Hunt your neighbor and say, he ain't playing today. <laughs> God intended or has a way that he wants every believer. Everybody say every believer. Every believer. A way he wants every believer to live. But we have been sucked in to living a normal life. Normal living, check this out, is worldly living. It becomes a substitute for what God has planned for you. And if the enemy can keep you thinking normal, he will destroy your capacity to rule. That was awful deep, Pastor Jones. Well, let me give you a shovel. We're going to dig this thing up. Listen to this. God was so staunch on spreading this Garden of Eden thing until he, first of all, told Adam, he said, you can eat of every tree in the garden. I, I, me, and, me and this man were talking about that this week. He told Adam, you can eat of every tree in the garden. Everybody say every tree. every tree. Now, whether you know it or not, there's more than two trees. See, most of us have lost focus on all the other trees because we did the same thing that Eve did, and we just started looking at one tree. Now, I've heard commentaries say that that very one tree that God told them not to eat was different from every other tree because it didn't even have roots. That it was suspended in air. That's something I heard. Do I believe that? I don't know whether to believe that or not. But I know the principle is, remains the same. That if whenever the enemy wants you not to enjoy life, he will have you focus on what he wants you to focus on. So he had Eve focus on the tree. And whether you know it or not in your life, you got a tree. And that's all you're looking at. You ain't looking at the word of God that says that he's got more than one tree. All you looking at, y'all ready? How your neighbor said, your trouble. I don't like the way y'all said that. Say, your trouble. Go ahead and hunt your neighbor. Now don't be scared of them. They ain't going to do nothing. They ain't church today. They ain't going to do nothing. Now they, they, they might do something when you leave here, but I ain't got nothing to do with that. What I'm talking about is right now. Hunt your neighbor said, your trouble. Yeah, see, as long as the enemy can keep your eyes on your trouble, he keeps your eyes off of the word of God for you. Think about it. What have you been focusing on lately? You're barely getting by. And he got you looking at your barely getting by. And he's got a whole forest full of trees. 
that you refuse to look at. You just won't look at it. Why? Because he wants you living normal. Everybody say, I ain't living normal. Come on now, say it again. Say, I ain't living normal. See, because we have not gotten the concept of the two world system. The Bible says that Satan, listen, is the God of this world. Oh, hallelujah. But God said this, I have translated you. How did your name say, I done moved. Yeah. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Listen, if you don't move, why are you going back to your old address? Hunt your neighbors. I don't live there no more. See, you know, okay, calm down. See, it's okay to visit. Well, let me put it this way you shouldn't visit, but most of us do visit. But you, that ain't your address. When you start giving your address to everybody you meet, they going to think you live at your old address. Everybody say slow rain. Yeah, some of y'all will get that tomorrow. You, you, you know, Dennis does the mail over there. Or, or they, you know, they do the mail. They put it up in the, in the little slots across the street. And some people leave here and don't ever leave a forwarding address. So they got all kind of mail over there for them. And it piles up and all of a sudden we'll get in touch with somebody. And say, don't you know you got a lot of mail over here? They never say this, I don't live there anymore. You didn't get that. They will continue to come back and pick their mail up instead of changing their address. You still picking your mail up at your old address. Hunt your neighbor said, I thought I had moved. <laughs> Anybody in here ever had an ex girlfriend or an ex boyfriend? And you and you moved. And, and, and look, 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 this is what they told you. They said something like this. They said something like this. I, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. Now, don't ask me what that means. I ain't got no idea what that means. I think that's, that's, that, that, that's, a, that's a satanic saying. Because ain't no way in the world you can do both of them. Either you love me or you don't love me. I'm not in love. Anyway, I, I could I could camp right there, and yeah, I could I could I could work that until it can't be worked no more. <laughs> what you believe is powerful, but you have to believe in two different worlds. You've got to believe in a supernatural and a natural. God is all about the supernatural. Not about the natural. If the enemy can keep you in the natural, he got you. Say it with me. I refuse, I refuse to live, live in the natural. In the natural. I, I say this often, and I, and I hope you can get it. Some of you haven't heard it, heard it. Some of you have. We're not humans having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual having a human experience. See, you wasn't supposed to live like this. This ain't what God intended for you. That's why they were so much in awe when God did all the miracles, like splitting the Red Sea. Man, that's normal stuff for believers. 
Now let me give you another one. The Bible says lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now listen now before you start doing a whole lot of amen because this might tip your boat. When did he ever, in, in that scripture, everybody said that scripture. In that scripture, when did he ever say pray? Lay hands, recover. Somehow, <laughs> some way, we've interjected some words in there that ain't supposed to be in there. Well, pastor of the other scriptures. Ah, see, there you go. <laughs> what you're trying to do now is to discredit what the word says about what I believe. Urban mentioned on Wednesday, if you can believe all things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. Now, if I were to ask you this morning to define possible, you'd use the opposite of impossible. But check it out. You can't define a word using the word. So you got to try to come up with something else to define possible. I, I, I'll give it to you straight up. Everybody say G O D. That's possible. That's him being possible. He is the only one who, number one, everybody say, he can't lie. He can't lie. And there's nothing, nothing. Too, hard too hard for him. For him. That's, possible. That's possible. Now, go in your Bibles now to Genesis chapter 1. Verse 1. Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. Now put your finger in that. You shouldn't have any trouble returning. And go to Hebrews 11 and 6. Hebrews 11, 6. Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. Using these two scriptures, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you some revelation this morning about normal and supernatural. Genesis 1 1, the very first part A of that says, In the beginning, who? God. Come on, y'all work with me. In the beginning, who? God. Okay, so if God was in the beginning, I said, If God was in the beginning, how many believe that? Okay, well, if you believe that, then that means that God, in the beginning, never stops. All right, come on. Come on. If God was in the beginning, and it don't stop, God's now. And if God is now, and Psalm 118 says, this is the day then I don't consider God for yesterday or tomorrow. I just consider God today. And when I think about God today, something happens to my tomorrows. In that today is a divine appointment for my tomorrow. Yes. Yes. Go to Hebrews 11.6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God, listen, must believe that he is. Is is the verb conjugation for now. Yes. Yes. So if this is the day that the Lord has made and in the beginning God, then God's not concerned about tomorrow. He wants you to enjoy today. 
you can't enjoy today thinking about tomorrow. <laughs> How many of y'all can say you ain't thought nothing about tomorrow? I bet not see a hand up. Or else we're gonna have a we're gonna have a service for lying after this is over. Because now some of you even got calendars, and you and you already plotted your life through the end of September, and some of you even through the end of December. Some of you have even started your Christmas shopping. And you ain't got no guarantee that you're going to see a Christmas tree. See how we can plan for... Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about planning per se. What I'm talking about is where your concentration is and how much energy you put into planning something that you don't know anything about. And most of our energy is wasted in a Matthew 6.33 thing that says, don't worry about what you're going to eat tomorrow. You better just eat your beans and hot dogs today. Because most of us get tripped off on planning for tomorrow. Say, say this to me. I'm going to live above normal. See, that is the way that we're supposed to live in this world. The other world wants you to be stressed out about other things. God says, in this world, you live stress-free. Everybody say stress-free. Stress now, for us, you might say, that's an impossibility. No, 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 that ain't what God said. There's only, listen, there's only one thing that God left you that you can readily enjoy. He says, my peace, I leave with you. Ain't nothing else he said he's going to leave with you but his peace. So, look, look, so peace must be the open door in the mansion that I got to go through first in order to enjoy my mansion. Everybody say, I got peace. I got peace. Now, see, you got, you got to believe what you say. If you believe what you say, because listen to this, doubt, murmuring, and complaining is birthed in what you think about. Doubt, murmuring, and complaining, listen, is birthed in what you think about. Wake up in the morning planting some seeds of murmuring and doubt. And that's one thing. I, I do devotion tomorrow. They're going to get a heavy dose of this tomorrow. Because I see half of them ain't here. See, and I didn't even mean to bring restoration stuff up in here. Well, this supposed to, today's supposed to be res restoration church. So I jollipies. <laughs> see, some of y'all had no idea. No idea what that was. If you don't know pig meat Markham, you don't know what that means. Anyway. Doubt, murmuring, complaining are burst in what you focus on. I mentioned again when Adam and Eve focused on the one tree in the garden, the first thing that came that they began to focus on was doubt. Here we go. The only avenue or inroad that the enemy has into your life. Well, you said that before, and I'm going to say it tomorrow, the next day, and the next day. Are thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. That's where the battleground is. And most of us are slaves to our thinking. You think the wrong thing, you're going to do the wrong thing. Just like there's right believing, there's wrong believing. you got to make a choice. The Bible says this, rightly dividing the word of truth. Well, if you can rightly divide it, you can wrongly divide it. And most of us walk out of here believing the wrong thing. Urban talked about it this morning. If you believe God put sickness on you, why in the world are you going to pray for him to take it off? Well, I just believe God just wants me to suffer. 
Well, you go ahead and suffer. That's normal living. Oh, come on. I said that's normal living. The world is supposed to suffer. But I've been translated. I have moved. I'm no longer in that world. I'm in another world. Well, how do you get there? Oh, I'm glad you asked this morning. Go to Colossians chapter 3. How do I, how, how, do I, how, how do I start thinking other than normal? Uh, here, here we go right here. Colossians chapter 3. And go to verse 1. Okay, when you got it, say, I got it. Okay, listen to what he says. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. How do I get there? Here you go right here. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. You got to stop thinking normal. Well, pastor, I, you don't know where I came from. And <laughs> I, you don't know my church experience and how I have been crippled in my spiritual walk. Well, if you've been crippled, Get a cane. Well, y'all didn't get that either. Get a cane. This be your cane. You can lean on this thing right here. Because this, this, this thing right here, whenever you can get it to cease being a thing and get it to be a who. It takes it out of I have to and it creates in me a hunger because I want to. Can't get enough of them sugar crisps. Just can't get enough. Whenever I get whenever you get in the word of God, don't be looking at the clock seeing how much time you're gonna spend in the word. Enjoy yourself. Have a party in party city. Let God relax your mind. Let, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, let God sing happy birthday to you. Go get you, you know what you ought to do when you leave here? You ought to go get you a cupcake, hostess Twinkie, something. Put a candle in the middle. Go home, light it, and throw yourself a party. Why? Because I've been delivered. I don't have to wait on nobody to throw me a party. I throw my own party. Why? Because he delivered me. I might not be invited to your party. And chances are, I ain't going to invite you to mine. Try sharing a cupcake. Everybody say, no more normal. No more normal. Okay, all right. Do I want to go there or do I not want to go there? Yeah, let's go there. Second Corinthians chapter 4. So if you set your mind on things above and not on things on the earth, you can live above normal. Second Corinthians chapter 4, go to verse. Let's go to verse 11. <clears throat> Excuse me. Verse 11, and it reads, For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. So then death is working in us, but life in you. Everybody say life. life. 
Now, I, I could go there and we, we could really do this thing, but it, I, I better not right now because time is getting late. But listen, and since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. For we also believe and therefore speak. Knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we don't lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Oh, Lord Jesus, I love that. Our light affliction, which is for how long? Oh, do you, anybody know what a moment is? Gone. Everybody said, now you see it? Now you, see it. Now you don't. Light affliction. And uh, let me ask you something. Comparatively speaking, how long you been afflicted? See how many you <laughs> notice it is a afflicted. Afflicted is <laughs> afflicted, for those of you who don't know, is a ghetto term that was used probably to talk about your mother. See some of you. Oh, she said, really? I forgot she from Danville. <laughs> you know, anybody ever played the dozen? Uh, see, 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 some of y'all just won't lie. And, and you said, you'd have said worse things than afflicted. And they only said, they only said afflicted because they didn't know nothing about afflicted. That, that, that's like poor and poor. Okay, see, I know y'all want, want, stop looking at the clock, I'm, I'm going to be done in a minute. <laughs> for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal way to glory. I want you to get this next verse. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Everybody say Bible, Bible. Principle. principle. But he, he, listen, but you got to realize what eyes you're looking through. You cannot see the eternal looking through natural eyes. But God, in his infinite wisdom, gave us a moment in time to look through. That gives a resurrection hue to everything you see. If you see everything through the cross. So while we don't look at things we can see, I can put my spiritual eye on what's already done. And what's already done will manifest itself in my hands. Because I am now walking, listen, I'm walking from position and not condition. As long as you look at condition, you will never experience position. How, how can you say that? Very easily. I, that was a joke that I told earlier this week, and I guess it's been spread all over Restoration, so I might as well let some of y'all in on it. There was a couple <clears throat> uh, riding through Mississippi, and they ran through this town, Nacogdoches, Mississippi. And they began to argue about how to pronounce it. And they argued for about 30 minutes. 
And this man, the, the man who was driving, said, I just can't take this anymore. First place we stop, first place we get to, I'm going to stop and ask how you pronounce this place. So he pulled in to this place and he went up to the counter and he said, ma'am, you got to settle this argument for me and my wife. We've been arguing about how to pronounce this place for about 30 minutes. So could you tell us real nice and slow how you pronounce this place? And the girl looked at him, kind of odd. He said, just, just do it real nice and slow so me and my wife will know how to pronounce it. And she said, Burger King. <laughs> Say, ain't nobody lost the Holy Ghost, you still say. <laughs> you still say everything, everything's all right. Aren't your neighbor say, well, you still all right? You, you just had, say, say you just took a dose of medicine, that's all. Yeah, the Bible calls laughter medicine. All right, now l l let me prove that to you. Go to Deuteronomy 28. And I'm, I'm about to close. And I'll... <laughs> I'll pick some of this up Sunday after next. <clears throat> okay, everybody got that? Deuteronomy 28. Now I'm going to show you what living supernaturally looks like. Mary has this phrase. It just stuck, it's been stuck in, in my spirit since the first Sunday morning as she said it. She says this. She'll get a topic and then she'll say this. What does that look like? And, I'm, and, I'm, and, 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 it, and it blesses me because sometimes when, you, when, when you're in church and, and people say churchy things, and if you really can't define it, you want, what does that look like? Everybody say bless. Yeah. See, see that's, a, that's a position, that ain't a condition. So when you walk around talking about I'm blessed, you ain't talking about what's going on in your life. You're talking about what God has done for you positionally. When, when the Bible says you're seated with Christ in heavenly places, well, you know you ain't right there right now, but in, in the spirit, that's where I am. So w whenever I'm tempted, I see myself sitting at the right hand of God, at the right hand of Jesus, and when God looks at me, he got to look through Jesus to see me. So when he does that, he sees me righteous. That's a whole different subject. But he sees me righteous, not because of what I've done, but for what Jesus did for me. Anybody get that? So don't walk out of here thinking it's something you done done. God, you know, he, 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 he going to condemn you and hit you over the head for smoking a pipe last night. What he talking about? I'm talking about crack. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. See, this, this wouldn't be a good time to look down. <laughs> yeah, just, just look straight ahead. See, look straight ahead. You ain't going, he wasn't talking about me. I know that's what you're thinking. But ain't anybody ever been nervous in the service, you know? <laughs> oh, come on, I know some of y'all. I used to get so nervous with, I don't know why he's talking about me. I know I shouldn't have told him that. It ain't, it ain't that you done told me nothing. It's just that I'm just a mailman. I don't know where y'all your bills coming from. I just deliver them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Okay, everybody got Deuteronomy 28. Listen, we're going to run through this kind of quickly. Now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. Now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, as the Lord your God will set you high. Uh-oh. Set you where? You mean that ain't normal? See, if he had written it the way you're thinking, he said, I'm going to leave you right where you're at. <laughs> Y'all don't get this. If he had been talking the way we're thinking most of the time, he would have said this. 
I'm going to leave you right where you're at. But that ain't what he said. He said he's going to set you where? High! Above all nations of the earth. And all, oh Lord Jesus, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Now, you know, let me camp, I'm, I'm going to drop anchor right there for just a minute. Boom. Listen to this. If you knew your position, then money would be chasing you. But because you don't know your position, you think it's normal, you're running after money. Come on, come on. Amen, lights. Amen. I'm not running after money. I have a job that I have to go to. Well, well, well. Let me tell you something. And, and if you don't receive this, just put it in the closet, come back, get it later. Your job ain't your job. It's your ministry. You calling my job at craft, my ministry, well, the Bible calls you light. And he said he would place light in darkness. So if you, I, I don't care if you're a forklift driver or a, a, <laughs> I, I, I don't care if you're a cheese dumper, a cheese eater. I really don't care what, God placed you there. Have you been light where you are? Again, this would not be a good time to look down. Or do you just mix in with the world? Everybody swallow real good for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, one of the things that makes a difference here at Restoration is that we get an opportunity to travel back and forth between two worlds. The problem is, how your name is that? Don't camp there. Because we, that we have, here's my word, we have that proclivity to camp out in the worldly side of a ministry. Disregarding the people that we are supposed to be ministers to, we become one of those who need ministering. Well, how can you say that? Well, because Jesus told Peter, after you have strengthened yourself, strengthen your brother. Um, how can I do this? I, I don't mean can, can you sit on the floor for me okay can you gonna be able to get up ain't you yeah okay now that's like, like it's like doing this okay Danny pull me up <laughs> pull me up man how come say that again okay come on Okay, now, pull me up, Danny. Yeah, I, now that, that, you know, he, he, I'm no, I'm shorter, right. but not that short. <laughs> but, but, but I want you to see the difference between a man being down pulling you up and a man being up pulling you up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Here at Restoration, It's impossible for me to minister to you if there's some areas I need ministering in. So I've got to 
recognize, everybody say recognize, I've got to recognize those points in my life that I don't believe God is strong and I would, I would be stupid to try to help you in the areas I'm struggling in. I'll, I'll, I'll mess you up. I'll mess you up. We experienced something this morning jokingly. And some, one of, the, some of the hardest times that I had, especially when I had prepared a message on marriage. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we'd argue all the way to church. And we'd hallelujah during church. And they get in the get in the car and argue all the way home. Everybody said that's a conundrum. <laughs> in other words, I wanted it to work for you. Check it out, but it ain't working for me. So, man, you, you know, at, at some point, you got to find out the motive, what's really in your heart. Are you, are, are you studying this thing to live it, or are you studying it to teach it? Everybody say, it's a lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, uh, say, I'm light. Yeah, say it again. Say, I'm light. Okay. What, what? Okay. Okay. All these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord. Bless you. Oh, Lord. Gee. Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. Now, some of your Bible says feel. I like feel better. Okay. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and oh Lord, blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies to rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the... Oh, Lord Jesus. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand and he will bless you in the land which the Lord God is giving you. I could continue, but you know, the latter, that's just the first, the front part of 28. The second part of 28 talks about the curses that will come upon you. Everybody say, thank God for Jesus. Because what Jesus did is that he came and erased the back half of that stuff so that you could only experience the front half. Because the Bible says he became a curse for me. So all I got to do is read the front part of chapter 28, knowing that I'll never, ever have to experience the, the back part. Never experience the back part. Because of Jesus and what he did on the cross. But if I believe it, I got to say it. That becomes the key. I got to believe everything in verses, in chapter 28, from one until I get to the curse. When I get to the curse, there's one name that stands out above all names, and that name is Jesus. Because the Bible says you got money trouble. The Bible says he became rich, became poor, that you might be rich. And then he says, I have, beloved, I have given you all things that pertain unto life and godliness. The reason why, and I'm about to close. The reason why most of us, me, you, everybody else included, we do not experience the things of God is that we have idols that we have refused to get rid of. I ain't got no idols. Oh, man, I bet if you check your heart, you find one. How I many of your kids can be an idol? Let me tell you what, an idol is something that you just refuse to give up. 
John's got a, John's got a, a, a song that he sings, I give myself away so that you can use me. Well, how come he can't use you if you don't get out of the way? Well, I'm going to tell you why. Because in the Bible, it says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Well, he was, he was Lord before Uzziah died. So how come he had to wait till he died? Because his eyes. I said his eyes. Had begun to idolize. Uzziah. So in the year that King Uzziah died. I saw the Lord. If you would kill your idols. Your sight would get a whole lot better. I said, if you would kill your idols, your sight would get a whole lot better. Don't worry about who knows about your idols. This ain't about nobody but you and God. We talked in Sunday school this morning, and, I, and this is where I'll end. Most of us are so concerned about what other people think about us. Until God can't use you because of your thinking. And Ir Irvin said it this morning, and I was cringing in my seat again when he said it, because he said, they had a thought about you even before you did what you did. And I guarantee you, it wasn't a good thought. If you, if, if you think you're the only one in here who's been talked about, you, 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 you're rudely mistaken. Because even if people ain't been talking about you to somebody else, they've been talking about you in their head. Most of us have been wonder, walking around wondering what people think about us. Who, who, who cares? I, it, listen, I get in trouble all the time here at Restoration because of what I say. Because I don't give a care. <laughs> you don't like me? Well, I don't like you either. <laughs> I, you know, I heard, I, I don't like your wife. I don't like her either. <laughs> Shut up, Urban. <laughs> don't, 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 don't let. What you, how you know God thinks about you to make you do something you don't want to do. I know God loves me. Now, you, you know, you can talk about me. They, they wrote songs about you, about me, about you. I don't give a care. I'm on, it, it, the book of Romans, chapter 12, I didn't even get to go there this morning. That, that's, that was supposed to be my jump off scripture. I didn't even get there. But right, right around the, the third verse in Romans 12, 3, it says, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought. Because God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. See, when you walk around here with the big head, ain't nobody going to like you. Because if you, if you talk the way you're positionally supposed to talk, it will come off like bragging. You all that? Yeah, I am. I am. I, I'm, every, I'm every bit of what God says I am. I'm fearfully, wonderfully made. See, some people can't handle that. Insecure people can't handle talk like that. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. You just quoting the Bible. No, I'm serious. Now I have. I know my limitations. I, I, I like to fly an airplane, but I ain't gonna go fly one tomorrow. And if I did, you'd be stupid to get on the plane with me. 